Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today I want to talk about the We Are Memory Keepers button press. And if you are familiar with button making, you will know that We Are Memory Keepers came out with their edition of a button machine. And the beauty of this one is it's way more affordable. You can get the basic set that has the, it makes small, medium, and large buttons, or we call flare or pins. And the medium one, which is about an inch and a half but size buttons is about a hundred dollars and then you can get so this is the mediums right here and then this is the base and the top part and the ring for actually cutting out the paper to fit the machine you can get that for a hundred dollars and then for an additional twenty five dollars you can get the small and here is the ring to cut that and for an additional $30, you can get the large, or excuse me, the small is about an inch, the large is about two and a quarter inches, and there's the ring for that. And so, but you can also get for about $140, you can get all of this together with some of the accessories. The other thing that the machine comes with automatically in either set is this, which is the platforms for actually using the die cut ring. Now these do have a die, a metal that comes right out of that crack right there, so you do want to be careful in handling this. It is protected by foam. So having owned two of the big heavy metal button making machines myself in different sizes, um, this is going to be a comparison for me to be using this and see what it's like. I did test out the actual button making equipment, I mean supplies, from the American uh, button machine and button boy that those are standard to the T Cree machine but theirs for we are memory keepers is pr proprietary and the ones that I tried for the other machines even though they're about the same diameter do not work in this so just a heads up you have to use we are memory keepers supplies so this is one that I played around with so let's look at the first thing this is this platform here has an arrow on it when you're just cutting your paper it doesn't matter where this goes in this is the top part smooth side is going to go to smooth side so this goes there it's got a notch which meets that right there if you hold it in your palm and then lift it up there you go and then this will slide over so you can cut your paper. So let's play around. I'm going to do a bigger one so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using the two and a quarter inch size. I have already printed out some images. I want to tell you for success in button making, you are way better off if you will use good quality but printer paper thickness instead of cardstock. Because when you use cardstock, it is so thick thick that it has a hard time. The paper has to mold around the dome here like this piece here. The paper has to mold around there and the cardstock doesn't do as good of a job. You can see this is the finished size of the of the um, pins here or the foil. And we're going to need a piece of mylar that size as well. I'm going to put all those pieces right up here but the first thing I want to do is get this cut. So you can see here, looking through the hole, to get that centered. This is where it's going to be centered in your pin. So how do you want it? Lay that on there, slide it over. And the very first time out the gate, I knew that you might want to hit it more than once, but I wanted to see how it would do on its own. As you can see, didn't do a perfect cut, and this is not even thick paper. So I would think that if you hit it more than once with that lever, it would be helpful, but I wanted to test it out on its own. Okay, now we take these off. We want to grab the two pieces that fit in here to actually make the button. We have the base, see the arrows? You should be able to read them so you know that they are aiming the right way if you can read them. You want to line up base A, that arrow, with this arrow down here, right there. These are all magnetized. And the top, see the A right there? 
gets matched to this arrow here. I have found that if you push the center up for it to magnetize, to catch that magnet up in the middle, it really helps. There. And see how it just slides? We don't want this arm to be down in here. We want it hanging there and then aiming to A and this arrow aiming to that A all the way. Then you're going to take your dome piece or your shell and you're going to put it with the slightly rounded side facing up and then your image. Now on this, let me show you really quickly here, there are these two little notches here and here. That's horizontal on your pin. So you want to make sure that you line that up perfectly, then your mylar. We've got something on that. And your mylar. Okay, now we're going to slide this over all the way down. Then we're going to move this out. And here's where you put in your pin. Now the pin, again, it's horizontal, right? So you see how we've got the part that you can actually open and shut? That needs to be faced down in here. And it needs to be horizontal with those lines that we mentioned before. And now we're going to slide this to B and this to B. Swing this back over and around we go. And we have a beautiful pin. This is one of the images that I designed. Now I still, in spite of all that, I thought I lined this up. This is what happens with those horizontal lines. I thought that I hit that with those horizontal lines and I didn't. See, look at my, my pin is crooked. All right, so better luck next time on that. That was uh, operator error. I noticed that the mylar is not quite tucked in here around the edge and so I'm not sure if that is going to be a continued problem or if it's going to work out all the time. Like I said, I've done I've done hundreds and hundreds of buttons already in my not just with this machine, I mean, but with my other machines. So I'm used to button making. Let's do this again. This time we can take the same thing and make a mirror out of it. Okay. So what I have here is another image I designed that says Lolly Peep. And I think what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to cut some of this around it. I don't want to cut the foam, but I do want this to be more round as I put it in the platform so I'm not catching those edges as I swing it around. I'm grabbing the paper and the die together, seeing if I can get a better grip on it. Okay, let's see if it cut better that time. It sure did. I just had to make sure that as I was cutting it, I was holding on to the paper and this. So now we have a beautiful image here. Let's do this again. We are going to put this part in there. I'm pushing the center up because it helps it to meet that magnet better. There, flip it to A, base, A. Okay, put the shell or the dome in there. And I'm being mindful of my notches. And a mylar. Now, what we're gonna do now for the back on this one, on any of these button making um, pieces, if you are going to do something besides a pin, just unhook the pin and remove it, and then you can use the flare as a different item. For instance, you can make paper clips with this. They also sell a barrette kit and they sell, I mean a bobby pin, and they sell a keychain and a rosette. And this is the mirror set that I'm working with now. So let's do this. Okay, now we are going to switch this to B. B. So we are just going to put this in there, the back, without the pin in it. 
okay so, but I'm still going to put it in there upside down so that this will the smooth side or the pretty side is going to be down here it doesn't matter for the mirror where these holes are placed and it occurs to me that when I switch this to the B it changes the orientation of those notches and that's why I got my pin on there wrong I just, I really wasn't looking at the notches last time so I'm going to put this in there swing it over And there is that but I want to put the back on it so for the mirror let's show you the package here there it is right there it comes with everything you need so there's this foam piece to put that in there I don't here's I think that a lot of their products are lacking instructions direct instructions and so there's nothing written about Actu the actual assembly, I was even looking online and not even seeing, sorry, I didn't get them off camera. There's the foam. I just took the foam piece off, put that in there, put that in there. Now this is the little thing to protect it, but there's no way to actually secure it in there. And I thought that was really fascinating. And there, like I said, there's no direct instructions about that. So my guess would be that I'm just going to have to glue that in there. So let's do that. I was even looking to see if there were any tutorials on this online. I'm just going to use some power tack. Sorry. I'm not used to this camera angle. Let's pull this down a little bit so we can see more. There we go. So I just glued around the rim of that and I'm going to let that set. So this is what it's going to look like. Lollipeep. And there's the mirror. So again, the way I showed you to remove the pin before you actually make this uh, on the back, that's what you would do if you wanted to turn this like this, turn it into a paper clip. And they sell the paper clip blanks. You might be familiar with seeing paper clip blanks like I have in my shop. And they have their own style of those. They're way more hollow here than what I have and with that comes some little foam pieces so that you can adhere it or you can uh, the other thing you could use these foam pieces for is if you want to just put foam in the back of here and use it as an embellishment in your craft project so let's pull one of these out of there it's got sticky on both sides and then we just center that right there okay so that is their paper clip my thoughts about the machine so far, I think it's a great deal that you would be able to get all three sizes without having to spend $300 to $350, even $400 on each size machine. I like that they have the accessories to make all these other things. I think that's really a great uh, idea. The price for the whole machine is probably worth it, but my concern is what I'm seeing on every project is that the mylar is coming undone. And you can see right here, I can stick my thumb on nail under the mylar. It is not tucked under like it should be. And that is this one did that, this one did that. Let's see how this one's doing. It seems like it's holding, but it makes me wonder. The other thing is, I feel like some of these items, accessories, are a little lower quality than I would expect, and maybe they're just trying to make it an affordable price point. I do wish that they would have made it so that you could use the accessories or, you know, the domes from other machines. You know, you know an inch dome with one machine would work with an inch dome with another machine, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Um, also, I would rather just see some flat b b uh, backs that you can get without always having to remove this and having an excess of pins left over from all your projects. So I want to show you the paper clip kit, what that the pieces look like in here. I showed you already, but I want to do a comparison. I just felt like this was pretty flimsy when I saw it. Maybe it's just that it it's recessed so far into, and I think the reason it's recessed, it's got mold lines on it, which makes it really rough, and you'd have to sand that off. But I think it's recessed so far back. This is the ones that I carry in my shop, but it's recessed so far back to accommodate for the thick foam 
that they have on their projects. So that's probably why, but it makes the whole paper clip really thick to have such a thick piece of foam. So I do prefer these ones. Um, but anyway, that's just a personal preference. I just feel like some of the, like I said, there shouldn't be mold lines on here still, you know, and I'm looking and that one has mold lines on it. So just a personal preference. I would like it to be a little more sleek. Uh, I think I understand many people have said that the learning curve was pretty high on, on getting learning to use this. And I can understand that because if you've never made buttons, especially, or never made flare, I could see how that would be problematic. But having made buttons before, I felt like this was pretty easy to understand. Um, one drawback as well was there were no instructions with the machine and you had to go online and get those. But I'm noticing that this is uh, a trend with We Are Memory Keepers that they are switching to online instructions only, like for instance with the Crocodile and Crocodile Big Bite. So anyway, that's my quickie review. Overall, it's, it's worth it if you're going to be making a lot of buttons. If you are technologically challenged or mechanically challenged, this might not be the button maker for you. Um, but if you feel like you can handle the challenge, remembering to switch to A, B, A, B, and you saw my mistake on camera right there, that when I when you rotate this to B, you still have to look for the little lines on the side to show you where to line up your pin. And I'm just not happy with the mylar sticking out. Let's see if you can really see this here. You can see it's even sticking out right there, which means that this is not going to last. So that's my overall review, um, not sponsored in any way by We Are Memory Keepers. I just like the company and like their products. And so the jury is still out. Um, I will definitely be using it. I think making mirrors is something that I would really like to do with this. I think these are really handy. And I do make paper clips with mine. I do make pins and I also make a lot of flare and embellishments. I can take these, the emblem here, the pin, and then use it as a decoration in my crafts. It makes a great center for a flower. So thank you for, for watching, and I hope that gave you some insights into this machine.